Hello everyone, in this video we're going to get started with the Raspberry Pi 2. First of all, what is a Raspberry Pi 2? Uh, Raspberry Pi 2 is a credit card sized single board computer. Uh, its central processing unit is a quad core ARM Cortex A7 that operates at 700 megahertz. Uh, the memory is one gigabyte of RAM and the storage is via a micro SD card and that is a, will be a, an external uh, SD card. The graphics, uh, it, it has a full HD video core for 3D graphics uh, and uh, the interfaces include four universal serial bus ports or USB ports, uh, a 40 pin GPIO header and that GPIO header includes UART, I2C, serial peripheral interface, PWM and digital I.O. It's capable, it also has a full HDMI uh, port for connecting to a television or a monitor. And it also has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that's combined with composite video uh, for interfacing with uh, older televisions. Uh, it has a camera interface, a display interface, and an ethernet port. So to get started, uh, the first thing we need, of course, is the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, this uh, I, I got mine from Element 14, but I've also provided a link for uh, where you can get it from the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, through Amazon. Uh, on the right here, we have the, the Raspberry Pi 2, and it uh, it uh, at first glance it will look uh, very similar to the Raspberry Pi uh, 1 B Plus model. It ha uh, has four USB ports that are over here. The Ethernet port is here. The 3.5 millimeter uh, combined audio and composite video jack is here. Uh, the camera port, HDMI port. Uh, down here, uh, I didn't mention that on the previous slide, but the, this is a mi the uh, micro uh, USB uh, port for powering the device. And uh, then you have the display port and the 40 pin GPIO header is right here. Okay, we're also going to need a micro SD card and an adapter for that card. And uh, this micro SD card will form the basically the storage for the for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's where we'll store our files and our operating system and everything on that. Uh, I'm going to be using a 32 gigabyte card, and there uh, these micro SD cards are not created equal. Uh, so I'll just review the, the specs on them. Uh, some of them can. Uh, are capable uh, a little bit more capable than others uh, but uh, I provided a link to the one uh, that I'm using here uh, it comes with an adapter and an adapter allows us to, to plug it into our computer and uh, load the operating system uh, you're also going to need a Wi-Fi dongle and uh, I provide a link to one that I'm using here there's a picture of it uh, real small just plugs into the USB port uh, you'll need a USB mouse and a power supply. Uh, then, now the power supply, uh, the interface is a micro USB, so that'll be very similar or will be the same as uh, a lot of your cell phone or tablet uh, power supplies. Uh, but you need to be careful that it can, uh, what you use can supply enough current. Uh, up here you can see that the output of this supply that I'm using here that I've provided a link to uh, it operates it puts out 5 volts and 2000 milliamps or that'd be the same as 2 amps uh, that's that's what I would recommend as a minimum supply for, for your Raspberry Pi 2 uh, you can also uh, I've also seen them in uh, 2.5 amps uh, and that would be suitable as well uh, if you have something that uh, some of your cell phone chargers might only put out 700 milliamps or 1,000 milliamps, and uh, that won't be enough for you. So be, be aware of that. I provided a link to the one I'm using here. Uh, in addition to all that, you're going to need a, an HDMI monitor or television, and that's so, so we can uh, uh, have, have something to look at. You'll need a USB keyboard, uh, at least at first. Uh, you need, you'll need to have Wi-Fi internet access and you'll also need to have another computer initially so that you can download the operating system that's going to go on a Raspberry Pi you, and then uh, create an image of that operating system on the micro SD card and then optionally uh, remote access to the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to say have your Raspberry Pi in your 
in a, in a, in a home office or in your, in your bedroom and uh, you want to be sitting on the couch and watching TV on your laptop while you're playing with a Raspberry Pi, you can do that and uh, you'll need to have that, uh, uh, another computer to be able to do that, of course. Okay, once you already have all the uh, items that you're going to need to get started with Raspberry Pi 2, go ahead and navigate over to the raspberrypi.org website and then click on Downloads. And we are going to download the operating system we're going to use. Uh, suggest if you're just starting out, start off with a Raspbian image. Uh, you could also use Noobs, but uh, Raspbian uh, is what comes on Noobs, so uh, we're going to use just a Raspbian image. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and click on download the zip file and I've already done that and it's, and it's uh, downloading right now. Uh, if you don't have uh, a program to image a, an SD card, I suggest then you go, go over to grab the Win32 disk imager and I'll provide a link to that in the, uh, in the description below the video. And go ahead and download and install that as well. And then we'll come right back and we will uh, image the SD card. Once your download completes, navigate to where it was downloaded and extract the extract the zip file so that we can get the uh, so that we can get the image. So we'll go ahead and do that. Next, we're going to take a look at the drives that we have present on our computer before we install the micro SD card. Uh, make note of the drives that you have active and then plug in your micro SD card in the adapter and see what, what drive it shows up as. Okay, you can see that on my computer here, uh, the SD card is showing up as drive D. Uh, it's important to be very careful uh, that you uh, understand which uh, drive uh, your micro SD card is identified as. Uh, it might show up as something different for you, so be careful that you select the correct drive for your micro SD card. Uh, if you don't, in the next uh, couple steps here, you can cause permanent damage to your computer. So be very careful that you have correctly identified which drive is your micro SD card. Okay? Okay, next you're going to open up your disk imager program and you may have to run that as administrator. Make sure that the uh, device selected third warning uh, that uh, you need to make sure that you are uh, going to uh, select the device that you want to load your image to. If you select the wrong device you can cause permanent damage. Okay, then navigate to where the image is installed, where you downloaded it, and note that the images are identified by the release date. So this is the year, the month, and day. So 2015 is the year, May 5th. And that is the image we want to load. Go ahead and select that. And it's selected there. I don't know why I did that. Uh, and then uh, just uh, to write. And it's going to ask me if I'm sure. And we say yes. And it will start to image that device. This will take a while, uh, so I will pause the video and uh, we'll come back once it's complete. Uh, once this is complete, uh, you will just eject that drive and we'll take it out and we'll stick it in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, if you're using the same uh, imager as I am, you should get a message like this when it's complete. Uh, once it is complete, you can go ahead and hit OK. And then you can uh, come down here and uh, you can eject the drive, eject SD card, and now it's safe to remove that. And we can go ahead and remove from our computer and we can go put it in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now we're ready to start plugging things into a Raspberry Pi. First, let's plug in the mouse and the keyboard into the USB ports. Then we'll plug in the Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, next we'll plug in the HDMI port for our video. Uh, next we will insert the micro SD card and it goes on the bottom. Right here. Uh, 
talk this place. And the last thing we're going to do is apply power. Uh, now you'll, uh, it's best to plug in, uh, have the have the cord uh, unplugged from the wall, and plug in this end first. And be careful you don't uh, accidentally dis eject the micro SD card when you're doing that. I've done that a few times. And then we plug it in, and we will uh, we'll begin to boot. Notice the LEDs turn on right here, and it is booting up. And here you can see that the Raspberry Pi is booting up. Uh, notice that we have four raspberries at the top of the screen. That is uh, one raspberry for each core of the Raspberry Pi 2. And it's going to go through a whole sequence here, and then it's going to get to a menu. And uh, one of the first things we wanted to do is we want to expand the file system. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to use all of the space that is on the micro SD card. And so we will go ahead and we will hit enter. Uh, so root partition has been resized. The file system will be uh, enlarged upon next reboot. Okay. At this point, we will just go ahead and we will finish. And it asks us if we would like to reboot now. We will say yes. And by default, when we want to log into the Raspberry Pi, the default username is Pi. Well, not Poe, it's Pi. Enter. And then the default password is Raspberry. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And there, we are logged into Raspberry Pi. Uh, now, one of the things we might want to do is we want to go into our GUI, and we do that by typing in start x. Okay, now we are on the desktop of the Raspberry Pi 2, and one of the first things we want to do is we want to set up our Wi-Fi uh, adapter. Go ahead and, and uh, hover over this, then left click on it, and select your wireless network that you're going to use. I have two of them active here, but I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And then you go ahead and you enter in your password. And there, I have my uh, wireless active right there. And uh, by hovering over this, and this is this is only uh, in the uh, current version of Raspbian. Uh, if you have an earlier version than the uh, May 5th, uh, 2015, this, this uh, might be a little bit different for you. But you can see that uh, right now the Raspberry Pi 2 is configured as 192.168.1.4. Uh, that is the IP address. So if we want to access it from... Uh, a remote connection later that's that's what we'll have to remember okay so there are wireless is set up but we can just go ahead and check that real quick let's uh, open up a web browser and let's just try one we all know there you go and uh, so now we have our Raspberry Pi all set up and ready to go. Our internet's working. And in uh, future videos, uh, we will talk about some of the things we can do with it. So that's about it. I uh, hope you like this video. Please subscribe, share it, like it, and come back real soon because I've got lots of other videos and uh, there's some up right now. Thanks. Bye.